Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In Book 2, Chapter 16 of his Meditations, Marcus Aurelius is going to talk about how it is that the human being, or as he's going to put it here, the human soul, the soul of the human being, damages or injures, or to use another translation, degrades itself. And he sets out five main ways, this is not a comprehensive list, but five main ways in which this happens. And we want to be really attentive to the language that he's using because if we pay close attention to it, there's a lot going on here in these passages. So injuring itself, hubridze heauten. Hubridze is the verb for hubris, showing hubris, which typically we tend to associate with like pridefulness or some sort of uh, attempt to dominate other people. And it does include that in ancient Greek, but it also includes the sense of injuring, of doing harm to uh, another, or in this case, its very own self, a disregard for what's actually good and a willingness to allow damage to occur. So the human soul is damaging itself when it falls into these five problematic and to some degree overlapping or interconnected attitudes, comportments, ways of doing things. So the first one, which he talks about at a little bit more length than the others, is uh, translated here as when it does its best, right? Now, that's an interesting way of talking about it. The Greek is actually hoion ep heaute. And for anybody who's read Stoic philosophy, particularly Epictetus, this ep heaute is really quite striking because that's the realm of what is up to us. It's part of what's often called the dichotomy of control, which we know Marcus is quite familiar with because he's read Epictetus and mentions him. So when it's up to the soul or insofar as it's up to the soul, what does the soul do that's problematic? Well, here we get to this, this quite rich language. It becomes like an abscess, apostema, literally a, a thing that's like pulling apart, distancing itself. So like when your skin breaks and gets infected and starts oozing and stuff like that, that's what the soul sometimes can be like, or like some sort of growth. And it could be translated as a detached growth, could be translated equally well as a cancer. So anything from say a skin tag all the way through boils to actual cancer tumors. Now, how does a soul become like that? Because it does that in relation to the world, the cosmos, the universe. And you might say, well, that's kind of weird. How is a person, sometimes we say that person's like a boil on the face of humanity or something along those lines. And what we mean is they become noxious. They don't fit in with the rest of things. They're taking too much for themselves. And so he, he says to be disgruntled at anything. And that disgruntled is a word that sometimes translates um, anger or irritation. Uh, literally, it's, it's, it's being of a bad spirit about things. So being of a bad spirit at anything that happens, he says, is a kind of secession from nature, from fusis, from the nature of things and the universe that we're a part of. 
And he says, which comprises the nature or natures of all things, all the things that are in existence, all the things that we encounter. So when we make too much of ourselves, in, in, we often think, oh, I'm like carving out my own space. Everyone's got to look out for number one. We're actually damaging ourselves because we, according to Marcus, are connected with the rest of the universe that we're, we're trying to you know, take more than our fair share from. Uh, the second one, he says, when it turns away from apostrophe, right? It, it you know, turns its back is one translation, but it could just be it, it distances itself from, uh, from who? From, from other people and brings opposition, enantia ferretai. It, it brings things that are opposed, right? That might be noxious. In order to injure, hos blapsusa. So it, it's trying to injure other people, not itself, right? Uh, it sets out to do harm is another way of, of translating this. And then Marcus says, like the souls of the angry people, orgizo uh, menon, those who are in the process of being and expressing their anger. What do angry people do? Well, they do, in fact, distance themselves from others. They do, in fact, bring opposition. They do, in fact, try to hurt, to injure, to insult other people. And Marcus is saying, once again, when you do that, you're not just injuring somebody else. You are damaging your own self by doing this. The third one is relatively short when it's overcome by pleasure or by pain. But I think it is kind of interesting to note here. So pleasure uh, being overcome by hedone or pain, ponos, in this case, ponu, because it's uh, in the, in the uh, uh, dative. Um, so pleasure, hedone, that's very straightforward, right? There's, there's a, a lot of opportunities for us to see something pleasant, know that we shouldn't pursue it, we shouldn't take it, we shouldn't prioritize it. But we do anyway, and that, that means we're overcome with it. And this could be everything from, you know, an illicit affair to having a midnight snack when we're not supposed to have a midnight snack and everything in between, right? Pain here is not lupe, which is usually the, uh, the opposed thing to pleasure, this psychological state. It's ponos, which also translates as toil. Now, in ancient philosophy... Uh, pleasure and pain, the pain part is sometimes translated by lupe, sometimes by ponos, depending on which philosopher we're looking at. Very common among the cynics to talk about uh, pain as, as toil, right? But it's also something they take on. What does it mean to be overcome by toil or pain in that respect? It means that something is difficult, difficult to bear, difficult to do, maybe demanding upon us. And we don't do it. We retreat from it. We try to get away from it. Why would that be injuring the soul? Well, because the soul isn't supposed to be guided merely by pleasure and, and pain. It's supposed to go through those. It's, it's fine to enjoy pleasure. It's okay to endure pain, right? It's actually good to, to do so. Uh, but those shouldn't be the primary motivators. And so that, that's a problem, especially when it becomes a habit. The fourth one is particularly interesting. When it puts on a mask. Now the Greek for that is uh, connected to a term that you probably recognize from a somewhat different context. Hupokrinetai, right? So we get the word hypocrisy and hypocrite from this. And that originally means somebody who either is an actor or somebody who is behaving like an actor, somebody who is, as we say, putting on airs. In this case, putting on a mask, because in ancient times, uh, a lot of the comedy and tragedy, you actually had a mask that you put on. So in ordinary life, you're putting on a mask when you're playing somebody else. You're pretending to be something that you're not. And this involves doing or saying, so both action and words, what? Something fake, uh, epiplastos, uh, behaving in a fake way, an inauthentic 
way. Uh, translated here as artificial is another good way. Or something that's false. Now this is a very interesting term because literally in the Greek, it's not so much false or lying, pseudes, uh, but rather not true. On, meaning not, or, or taking something away, alethos. And this is an adverb describing how somebody behaves. So behaving in, we could say, an inauthentic, in a insincere, a non-truthful way, right? False encompasses it, but it's not the kind of falsity of like, oh, I made a mistake with numbers or something like that you are portraying yourself as something other <clears throat> than you really are in your actions, in your words, in your sentiments, in your attitudes. And again, uh, Marcus thinks that by doing so, this is damaging to the human being, the, the soul of the human being. And then finally, we have this very interesting one. Uh, when it allows its action and impulse to be without a purpose, to be random and disconnected. So this kind of the random and disconnected harkens back to the first one, right? Because if you're behaving as if you are a totally independent being and what you do has no connection to the rest of the universe, well, that can be this disconnected, literally like severed from other things or random. Now that, that randomness has to do with the not having some sort of purpose or goal or end in mind when you're doing things. Or I think it could also be having too many of them and like just, well, I'm doing this, now I'm doing this, now I'm focused over here, right? People who don't have a clear set of priorities. So action, praxis, right? That's the things that we do. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Impulse. So, um, Horme in Greek is the Stoic term for impulse. Now, horme does mean impulse, like a directionality towards something, you know, moving towards something. But it also means choice. So our actions and the things driving us and our choices about that, the way in which we actually decide, the way in which we prioritize right? That is uh, something we have to pay attention to. So without a purpose, there's two different words that are used here. Scopon is, scopos is a, literally something you're sighting in on. Like when you're, you know, shooting an arrow at the target, you have a, a scopos and that's to hit the target. If you're shooting an arrow to hit an enemy soldier, well, your target is maybe their chest. Or if you're a really good shot, you know, their eyeball or something along those lines. And actions can be purposive or they could be purposeless. And, you know, we do have some, we could say if they have purposes, they're very trivial ones, you know, walking down the street, whistling. Oh, why are you whistling? I don't know. I'm just whistling a song that got stuck in my head. You know, oh, there must be some grand purpose. No, probably not. Right. But the other things that we do we should order them so that they're actually achieving something. The other word that gets used in this passage is telos, end, goal, the thing that we're striving for. And scopos and telos kind of go hand in hand here. And Marcus is going to tell us that um, even the smallest things ought to be directed to a goal. It doesn't mean that the goal is all that we focus on, but you know, that's, that's some good guidance. And then he says, the goal for us, us human beings, rational beings, the kind of beings that we are, is to follow the rule and law of the most ancient of communities and states. Now, what is that? Does he mean like, well, we should all be Romans? No, because the Romans aren't the most ancient states. Maybe we should all be Sumerians. No, because that's not what he has in mind the most ancient of communities and states is the stoic commonwealth of gods and good human beings, human beings that are actually living out their nature that are not allowing themselves to turn into a tumor on the world, right? So we have the possibility of participating, according to, to Marcus, not only in nature itself, but even in this rationally ordered uh, commonwealth of 
higher beings that include ourselves if we're not allowing our soul to injure itself. So these are uh, some really important things to keep in mind. Don't be a tumor. Don't act like the angry people. Don't let yourself be overcome by pleasure and pain. Don't be a hypocrite, you know, an actor and make sure that you've got some sort of purpose, good purpose, legitimate purpose to the things that you're actually doing and thereby you'll avoid damaging your soul.